Hey guys, welcome to my little patch of paradise. Uh, my name is Colin Clark and uh, you might have seen my uh, somewhat amusing trailer that I put together the other day. Well, this is the uh, video that that trailer was put together for. It's not really in the same vein as the video, but hey. So what we're gonna do is um, really just take you on a little bit of a, a birding tour around the property that uh, myself and my partner Alex are uh, holed up in at the moment. Um, so we, we're told to go home from work and work from home, I think on the 19th of March. Um, so we've been basically living out here ever since. We don't normally live here. Uh, usually we live um, in the western suburbs of Melbourne in Australia, um, in a place called Altona in a beachside suburb, which is rather nice. Um, but uh, a few years ago, we purchased this piece of land uh, in the country. Um, we're about an hour and a half west um, of Melbourne at the moment uh, in a place called Junac. Um, which is uh, between a couple of small villages called Clunes and Talbot. Um, it's uh, yeah, a beautiful part of the world. Um, we've got 74 acres here uh, of kind of box ironbark forest, uh, a lot of yellow gum, grey box trees. Um, yeah, quite a, quite a variety. Um, some different habitats which you'll see on the, uh, on the video as we go through. Um, you can see behind me now the house that we built on the property. So the house is, uh, is straw bale, uh, it's completely off the grid. Um, so we, we're surviving on um, solar power. Um, so we've got a solar power system, we've got rainwater, uh, we have a worm farm composting toilet. So we're completely self-contained here, which is, which is really nice. Um, not, not beholden on any, any external services. Um, yeah. Uh, Maybe we'll uh, we'll get on with it. Okay, hope you enjoy. So before we embark on a stroll around the uh, around the property, we're going to start just by spending a few minutes uh, just doing some birding from the balcony here. Um, this is a first floor balcony facing out to the east. Um, it's early afternoon now, so the sun's gone around behind us. So we've got really nice light. Um, this is one of the more open areas of the property. Um, obviously with the house being here. We've also got quite a large dam in front of the house um, which has got an island in the middle of it. Well I say it's an island, it's only a peninsula at the moment. We're just at the end of summer uh, so the uh, the dam itself is kind of half full I suppose. Um, so it's kind of like a kidney shaped um, area of water. Uh, quite good for attracting birds, uh, particularly sort of maybe in about an hour or an hour or two from now there'll be some of the birds will start to come down to to drink and bathe in the dam um, it's also quite a good spot where we've got some nice uh, a good nice view of the sky uh, the, the majority of the block is forest so you can't always get a very good view um, up for flyovers and raptors and so on so i'll just give you some idea here we've got a pretty good view um, out to the east quite a nice clear Nice clear view there where we can see plenty of sky. So um, yeah, always a good chance to get, get some birds here. Things like swifts, raptors. Um, we get water birds. There's a, a swamp down the road called Merin Merin Swamp. Um, pretty dry at the moment, but if there was more water in that, then we'd get a chance. I've seen various things like uh, pelicans from here, uh, herons, um, quite a number of uh, sort of water species that we'll, that we'll see flying over here on their way to and from the swamp. Um, we're also quite fortunate to have a really good uh, dead tree in the middle of the dam, um, which lots of birds use for perching. I'm just going to move the camera slightly over so we can see that. Okay, so if we just take a look here, this dead tree that you can see in the frame now is... Uh, I would say I've probably had at least 50 or 60 different species of birds perching just in that tree alone, um, ranging from all sorts of things, passerines, raptors, uh, through to some strange stuff like spoonbills, herons. Um, oh yeah, all, all sorts of things. It's a, it's a pretty good spot. Um, one would be a very sad day when it, when it finally falls over. Um, it's certainly been dead ever since we've owned this land 15 years. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of an orientation. I'm just going to uh, fire the camera straight out here and we'll keep an eye out for, uh, for what species we can see. 
So the first species that we've picked up here, somewhat unsurprisingly, is the buff-rumped thornbill. Um, this is very much the right sort of habitat for this species. Um, not really what you'd expect as a, as a garden bird in many places, definitely a bird of the forests. Um, here in Australia, we've got quite a number of species of thornbill. Um, we get quite a number of them also on this block. I think I've seen five different species since I've been, uh, been living here in isolation. Um, so we also get brown thornbill, uh, striated thornbill, uh, yellow rumped thornbill, which we may well get on the walk later on, um, and yellow thornbill. So we actually, uh, these, we put these, all this little bunch of nest boxes here, they really are only supposed to be ornamental. Um, but the buff rump thornbills have taken to, well, they've started building a nest in the one at the back, the one that's facing us with a little heart-shaped uh, opening there. Um, so that's that's quite interesting. They used to build, they used to be regularly nesting um, kind of up in the eaves of our shed. Um, and now they've, now they've moved into this nest box. It's quite a quite a cute little bird. Probably can't see this one too well. We might just see some movement up in this tree. It's a little bit windy today. Um, but we've also been joined by another fairly common bird around here, um, which is Australia's smallest bird, and that's called the wee bill. Um, kind of uh, very, very small, tiny little bird. He's calling up there, and away he goes. Okay, I'll, uh, he's very, uh, they're, they're a very flighty little bird moving around a lot, um, feeding in the eucalypts. Um, yeah, quite, quite commonly seen around the house. Naturally, I managed to pick a very quiet time during today um, to record this section. Not too many birds calling at the moment. Um, very surprisingly, I cannot even hear an Australian magpie at the moment, which um, are pretty much calling all the time here. You can pretty much always hear those calling in the uh, in the forest. Sometimes very close, sometimes a bit further away. Um, one one thing you notice here, particularly this time of year, is it's very hard to pick what time of the day you're going to see lots of birds and what time it's going to be quiet. Um, in the summer, it's much easier. The the you know like the rest of the world, you're going to tend to see a lot more birds in the morning and in the evening, and the middle of the day is going to be quiet. But because we're in um, autumn now just going into winter um, we don't have the big heat of the day so you know the birds tend to be active often when the sun comes out which is why I thought there'd be quite a few around at the moment um, a few other birds I have sort of seen and heard while while I've been doing this recording uh, I did briefly see a yellow tufted honey eater which is a pretty common bird um, around here quite localized and specialized but um, yeah a really good place to see it and get good views um, I also heard a black-faced cuckoo shrike um, off in the distance and the, uh, and the call of the white-throated tree creeper also is another a fairly common bird that we, that we should pick up on the walk. Um, see if I can get some close-up video of that one for you. So we're going to head out on a sort of um, anti-clockwise circular tour uh, of the sort of northeast corner of the property. Um, we're going to take in some different habitats, some forest, some more open land that you can see there, and some farmland to the east and north. Uh, and then we'll head back to where we started. Okay, so we're now uh, down on the, uh, just walked out to the east side of the house. And um, this is the same view that we had previously from the balcony. Um, just kind of a quick walk around the dam because there's often some good birds coming down and this is not a bad time of day for them to be uh, coming down to get water and, and bathe and so on. So I'll walk carefully down here, see if I can do so without falling on my arse. Obviously this video is not supposed to be like my trailer. Um, <clears throat> those of you who saw the trailer, I was... Uh, I think I might just make a, a, a longer edition of that at some point. Um, but that's not what we're doing right now. But now, uh, watch this space and we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the camera right now because I've got a nice view of a uh, couple of our more special birds around here. Um, so I'm going to put this on pause. So the birds we're talking about are a um, 
Rufus Whistler and uh, Jackie Winter. Now they're both on the same branch. I'm zoomed right in on them now. So I think we can get those. I'm just filming those on the other camera, so we'll get those pretty good. Yep, looking pretty nice. So the um, Jackie Winter is um, quite closely related to the Australian Robins. Um, it's more of a flycatcher really than a robin, like all of our all of our robins are. Um, yeah, nice, cute little bird. Um, it's normally, I, I tend, don't tend to see this around here so much. It's a lot more, off, a lot more commonly seen around the edge of the property on the fence lines. Um, yeah, whereas kind of like you might see if you're from the UK, where you might see some of your flycatchers, European flycatchers, sitting on wires. Uh, or low branches catching catching flies from there. Um, the Rufus Whistler, um, also is, is a pretty common bird, often seen around the house. This is the male that we've got here. Um, yeah, nice bird. Okay, moving on. So we've still got fantails calling around. Um, we've got the fair fairy wren, the superb fairy wren in the background. So got this rather magnificent tree here. I love the bark on this tree. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll zoom in. It's absolutely stunning. Love it. Hopefully that didn't make you too seasick. Okay, and on we go. Still got the swallows, the welcome swallows up on the on the dead tree. All you uh, Australian bird experts, no doubt, can hear some of our other species in the background. Um, feel free to chip in and point out anything that I miss. Um, what was the sound of a an Australian magpie warbling away in the background? Very common bird. Um, I think pretty much throughout Australia. Um, they uh, sing rather a lot to keep us nice and uh, awake on their toes. Okay, the woolly wagtail is right in front of me right now. Maybe I can. There he goes. And also fantail. So the fantail's grey fantail. Uh, there's a few other species. Okay, something really really nice. Um, Right in front of me now, which you possibly can't see, uh, I've got a beautiful male golden whistler. Not too hard a bird to find around here. Just a very uh, a very nice one. Okay, so I'm sort of descending down the far side of the dam now. Um, so as you can see, it's uh, very much woodland habitat that we've got here. Um, pretty much all of this is native. Um, the the low this, this low stuff that you see down here it's commonly locally called Chinese gorse or Chinese broom um, but it actually is not uh, Chinese at all it is a, a native and it's quite commonly found through the goldfields um, region of Victoria where we are right now um, it tends to grow quite prolifically where the ground's been disturbed and here the ground has often been disturbed because of all the uh, mining and we'll probably I'm sure we'll go past some of the uh, some of the mine diggings um, as we go so one thing we do find around this around the property is that there aren't many there aren't actually tracks but the kangaroos tend to make tracks for us so you end up with these sort of trails going through the forest um, which are actually really quite easy to follow until a tree falls over, as is done here. Mm. 
Okay. So we're kind of, oh, sort of off-roading a little bit. Apologies if the camera jolts around. Okay. Um, two more very common Australian birds. I'm going to blind you with the sun now. Don't know if you can see those silhouetted up there. Um, these are our galahs. It's a very, very common bird, widespread in Australia. Um, it's a, a parrot, with which is basically grey on the back and uh, pink to almost a plum colour on the front, uh, depending on the individual and the light. Um, yeah, you see these in really large flocks, like the uh, much like the video that, I've, that, that you're seeing now um, in the in screen. So this this video was taken just a couple of days ago, um, just out in a slightly more open area than this. Uh, inside the forest, we tend to see them in in, in, in pairs mostly. Um, around the edges in the farmland, they can be in. In, in huge flocks sometimes. It's a, a very common and widespread bird. Okay, now I've got something in the tree. I'm just gonna put the camera down a moment and have a look, see what we've got. Looks like some kind of honey eater. Okay, so yeah, this one was a, a Fuscus honey eater. Um, another common bird here. Uh, not one that you would find um, might really close to the to Melbourne to the city. You need to come a little bit um, away from the city before we start finding Fuscus honey eater. Um, in the city, we find its close relative, uh, the um, white plumed honey eater, which is very similar. It has a sort of white um, collar uh, on it. The Fuscus honey eater, on the other hand, um, has a as a sort of as a much a sort of yellowish collar, but quite similar. Similar looking bird. We get both species on, on this block. Uh, also just caught a glimpse of a uh, another yellow tufted honey eater there. Again, common common bird here. Okay, moving on. So like I said, I'm sort of making, taking advantage of some of the kangaroo trails, um, yeah, which give us a nice uh, chance to walk through some of the thicker stuff without getting too caught up in it. <clears throat> Yeah, this one this one's a pretty this one's a pretty good example look we can see there's a really quite distinctive trail coming through the trees here um that is most definitely not man-made okay just come across something slightly interesting possibly um this is what's left of an old uh babbler nest so um in this part of australia um, this far south, we generally only get the white-browed babbler. Very much a forest specialist. Um, really going to see it in this sort of habitat. Um, hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll come across it on this walk. Quite a distinctive call, sort of jarring, chattering sound. And they'll they'll usually be in uh, maybe groups of four to ten or twelve, perhaps. Um, so we'll, we'll keep our eyes and ears peeled for those. Generally, you're going to hear them before you see them. Um, yeah, one, one example of our mine diggings here. So, yeah, this was very much a gold mining area. There were uh, five gold mines on this um, on, on this property itself um, and quite a number in the adjacent state forests. So, yeah, very, would have been at one stage, this would have been... A uh, real like a camp full of uh, full of miners from Australia and, and China and various other parts of the world. Uh, people out seeking um, seeking their fortunes and most likely not finding them. 
the old the old tale goes that the people the people who were most successful in the gold mining were those selling the picks and uh, picks and buckets rather than those actually looking for the gold. Okay, we'll carry on this way. I think. Okay, so one of the one of the birds you've you, you've probably heard calling. Uh, a few times while we're walking around um, is the white-throated tree creeper. Um, we've got two species of tree creepers here, um, the white-throated tree creeper and the brown tree creeper, probably about as common as each other. Um, normally you're going to see, on, a, on a, if you go out for a, a sort of 30 minute walk, you're probably going to see four or five maybe of each roughly, you know, they're, they're kind of dotted around. Um, not seen one on this walk yet but certainly heard both species at times so one one of the nice things that we do have here is that um on two two sides um we're bordered with uh forest with more more forest so kind of like what we're in um if not rather denser um interestingly most of the birds so you'll have seen the map at the start of the video of where we where we are walking um, one thing that we find is that the, the deeper we get into the forest, it really gets very quiet. We don't see nearly so many birds um, as we see in this front corner of our block um, and along the front of the uh, um, along, along the front of the property as well. Um, not quite sure why there's less birds in the in the in the dense forest, but. Yeah, we are the other two sides. Okay, here's some interesting birds or common birds. But so these these have just come across quite a small flock of white-winged chuffs um, and two eastern rosellas just flying by. These will probably fly off as I walk towards them, and you might hear their call a bit more. But they're quite a common bird, off very much a flocking uh, flock species. Um, very distinctive call, um, which I will play for you. So this is a, this is a very common sound that you're, you're going to hear throughout the uh, throughout the forest whenever you come across come across the flock. Um, they will generally be in flocks of um, eight eight to about fifteen is kind of normal. But I have seen sometimes it seems to me like the flocks join together. Um, so I have seen a, you know, a couple of flocks of 25 or 30 birds and a couple of weeks ago there was just like one mega flock of about 35 or 40 but that's pretty uncommon I think it's about the first time I've seen a flock quite as big as that um, normally about 12 to 15 is seems to be about the peak um, size of flock that we that you tend to get around here so this is a quite a, a very productive little area sometimes um, what we see in front of us is like uh, it's a bit of a hollow, and it, it does it sort of acts as a bit of a um, ephemeral dam. Sometimes there's there's water in here, and you can see it's sort of quite green even now. Um, I haven't seen water in it since we've been in COVID isolation, um, but I think it's probably not far off now. If we get a couple of good rains, we'll get some water in here, and sometimes we can get ducks and um, other. Um, water birds here herons and so on so yeah <clears throat> so two like i was saying before two two sides of the land are basically covered um border onto a state forest so there's another um quite a quite another amount of trees uh, heading off into the, into the distance but on our uh, east boundary and our north boundary more or less um we've basically got farmland so you've got grassland here, which is quite a different habitat um, and will give us some quite different birds. So this is this is quite a good spot um, to come and see what's either flying over or just in the grassland here. Um, I can just see off in the distance. You probably can't hear them because they're a bit too far away. I can just, just about hear them and then with, with, with the human ear. Um, there's a small flock of um, yellow rumped thornbills um, these are much more of a grassland species of thornbill so 
obviously related to the buff rump and the uh, brown thorn bill that we that we see around the house more more commonly and striated but they uh these these tend to be in grasslands these are a common species in the city as well you're they're a bit more widespread than some of the others which have a bit more specialized habitat um i'll, I'll cut i will cut in a, a little bit of footage that i've got from from a few days ago here um where you can just see one hopping around in the grass um but yeah quite a, a, probably a bird that people might be familiar with um even even from the city certainly in where i normally live in altona we we get this we get this species here where you find grassland in public parks and and the like also in the, in the evening typically we'll find quite a lot of um eastern gray kangaroos out in this paddock um yeah, this is a, it's a good good spot. There's plenty of grass at the moment, uh, quite a lot of kangaroos around. So once it starts getting closer to dusk, yeah, you'll often see quite a big mob of mob of kangaroos um, over here. I'm quite looking forward to when this uh, when this small dam gets full of water again. Um, so, so on, the, on the topic of wetlands. So not too far beyond the tree line that you can see in the background there. Um, there's a couple of swamps. Um, one's called Merin Merin Swamp and the other's called Middle Swamp. Um, fairly large. Um, dry, I suspect, at the moment, although I haven't been over there re very recently. Uh, not, not since the last time it rained anyway. But yeah, they're a really good spot. Um, some different species you, you'll see over there, particularly in the wetlands, than, than we get here. Although we do sometimes get birds flying over, so I think once we, uh, once the once the wetlands fill up, I think there's a good chance that we'll get some more flyover um, water birds here. Um, so I've quite a few. There's a few water birds that I've that I've seen here before that are not yet on my uh, on the list since we've been living here in isolation um, since the middle of March. Um, some things like white-faced heron we haven't seen. Um, a couple of species of ducks um, we haven't seen either. Um, and uh, up up until recently, I hadn't got um, shell duck, Australian shell duck, or Australian pelican, but I got both of those um, yesterday out on the on the front where we're where we're heading towards. So maybe we'll see them again. I might cut the uh, I got the footage of the pelican, so I might cut that into the into the video anyway. Um, yeah, so yeah, it could be some interesting birds flying over from from that direction once we get a bit of water in the uh, in the swamp. Okay, you can see by the uh, by the position of the sun that we're walking towards the north at the moment. So we're walking towards the northern boundary of our property, which is the road out the front. Um, obviously, we're in the southern hemisphere, so the the, uh, the sun goes round to the north of us during the day rather than to the south. Um, more stuff that's related to the mine digging. So I don't know exactly what this is, but it's quite a strange looking. Uh, bit of work this is definitely human created i suspect it was some kind of uh water channel where they used to wash wash some of the stuff down to look for the gold i, I really don't know but, um often is quite a good area for birds um very quiet right now so the jackie winters that we saw earlier well that's often on the uh often on that fence that we were just looking through but again doesn't seem to be there at the moment <coughs> I'm just going to backtrack slightly because I thought I heard a eastern yellow robin, which I think I can now see in a tree. So I'm just going to put this down and get some, uh, see if I can get some video of it. Yeah, nice. So not not calling now, but um, yeah, this is a the eastern yellow robin. Quite a number of these around the property. Certainly our commonest. Um, robin species here um, around the year. Um, we do get quite an influx at this time of year of flame robins which are a altitudinal migrant that sort of start to appear 
Um, they've been around for about a week or so, but yeah, this is the Eastern Yellow Robin, really nice bird. Sometimes you can get really, really close to these. They, they're pretty confiding. Um, yeah, nice bird. Interesting, this part, this is often very, very um, busy with birds through this particular area, but right now seems to be pretty quiet. Um, the dead tree that you see there is often a good spot. We're often going to get um, white-plumed honey eaters perched in there, um, eastern rosellas, sometimes red rump parrots. Um, yeah, but a bit of a selection, Fuscus honey eaters. Um, this year has actually been pretty quiet for honey eaters. Um, often we'll get quite good numbers of um, quite a variety of different honey eaters. I've gradually since I've been here, I've, I've pretty much seen all the ones I expected to see, but it's been hard work. Um, most years you, you would come out here no problem and see um, black chinned honey eater, white naped honey eater, yellow faced honey eater. Um, would all be very common. Um, I think I've seen, I don't think I've seen any of those more than a couple of times each um, since I've been um, living here um, with COVID, so it's quite surprising. Um, and even even the more common ones have not been quite so abundant as, as, as normal, I don't think. Um, the uh, Yellow tufted honey eaters, I mean, you're going to see them most of the time, but not in any really big numbers. Um, yeah, I'm not, not quite sure why. Um, I suspect it's probably related to conditions elsewhere rather than here. I think the conditions have been pretty good for them here, but maybe they've been better elsewhere this year, so they've, uh, they've decided to uh, move on. Um, one, one, one sighting I did have the other day, which was quite a nice one, was um, we had four um, blue-faced tummy eaters, which was actually the only the second time I've seen those here, so that was quite nice. Um, saw those out well, where we're heading right now. Um, not a great chance we'll see them now, but yeah, that was quite a, a bit of a bonus. I think there's probably only one, I think the only species of honey eater that I have seen here previously that I've not seen since we've been here as a painted honey eater and that was a one-off sighting a long time ago so I think that one would be that would be a mega bonus if we got one of those extremely uh, rare endangered species well that has been known to uh, up until quite recently or quite a few years ago they were they were known to be nesting uh, in a location not too far away from here so certainly they could still be in the area it's a bit windy here. I don't know how that's going to be affecting my audio recording, but um, since I'm just using the phone, I don't have anything to uh, dampen the wind coming off. So the wind's kind of in the, more or less in the north, north a little bit northwest. Um, so again, we're coming out to the front of the property now. I'm going to walk just outside my property simply because the uh, the track's a bit better on it. It's actually a road, so... And, uh, walk without tripping over twigs and stuff okay so this this is a completely different habitat again so we're back out onto the uh, onto the grasslands another another farmer's paddock basically um, pretty quiet going today but there's always quite a lot of uh, so we just heard a um, noisy miner out the back um, Noisy miner is a native bird, uh, not to be confused with the common miner, um, which is an introduced species. Uh, noisy miner, also quite an aggressive species. Not everyone really likes them very much, but um, they typically have not been a very common bird around here, actually, um, over the years. But right now, 
I'm pretty much, if you come to this corner of the block, to the front of the block, you're going to hear or see them every time. Um, can't see them right now, but I certainly heard them a moment or two ago. Um, if I look out across the paddock, I can see quite a lot of magpies feeding in the grass, Australian magpie. Um, so the Australian magpie is not really a magpie in the same way as the uh, willy wagtail is not really a wagtail. Um, actually belongs in the butcher bird family. Um, very, very common bird, lots of them all over the place. Um, also surprisingly on this walk, we've not heard, but I can see um, some ravens out in the paddock. Um, probably the majority around here are Australian raven. Um, we also get little ravens. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to cut in some footage of those at some point. Um, very, quite distinctive calls. They actually look very, very similar, very hard to tell apart reliably um, visually um, but the the calls are suitably different and they're they're not shy at being vocal so they're, they're pretty easy to tell apart um, sometimes they'll be they'll be in big flocks of 50 and 60 and 70 birds uh, around here out, particularly out the front so this this is the other area where we typically see the um, Jackie winters on this fence okay and they don't seem to be around today so it's quite good that we saw them early on um, So we do one one quite handy different habitat, and I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe I'll show you a bit more when we come up. Is this? Uh, you can sort of see the the um, hedgerow there, the roadside. Um, so there's a fence similar to this along there, but quite a lot more small bushes and stuff. Um, so we do we do get some other birds there um, that are certainly not forest species, and you probably wouldn't see them around here where it's just so open. So um, I might just have a quick look across and see what I can see. So. Just going to put the camera down a moment. Okay, so there's some uh, there's an Australian pipit on the far on the fence over there. Um, way off in the distance, I can just hear a European skylark, um, which is one of the few um, non-native species that we do get around here. Um, and I can also just about make out a. Um, white fronted chat um, which is a really cute little bird I will be cutting that one in because I got some good footage the other day um, fortunately it's white otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to recognize it from this far away um, we'll often also get yeah which I can just see on a really there's a, there's a telegraph pole right in the distance and a wire that goes across um, and on there there's a brown falcon it's pretty unusual that when there's not a brown falcon there, there's um, at least four of them in the area. Um, and, and, and they're mostly to be found over, over the back there. Um, sometimes we see them over on our land. I've seen them in the, in the big dead tree on the dam as well at times. So um, they'll, they'll range around, but um, I'll, I'll cut in the video of the brown falcon for you. But a pretty, pretty common and easy to see bird here. See if I can, I don't know if I can get this, but I'll try. Um, I've just got a one of our native marsupials here. Um, he's just uh, there. You may just be able to see him jumping around, perhaps. Um, he's a yellow-footed antichinus. I've lost him, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get some footage. But I'm going to try and get a bit closer and see if we can find it again. One of the interesting things about this particular species is that uh, they basically feck themselves to death, which is quite a uh, quite a way to go. So the, the, the story goes, and I, oh, there we go, so I can see him again, okay. Um, so he's just at the base of that tree. Will you be getting, let me see. Climbing up the tree now. I'm trying to video him with the other camera. 
Yeah, so yeah, as I was saying, the uh, the males basically, when it comes to mating season, they are um, very very active, let's say, and it tends to destroy their immune system so much that they basically die from it. So, um, so they basically shag themselves to death, which I suppose you could say is uh, one hell of a way to go. Nice, yeah. It's been, been quite a while since I've seen one of those, so that was quite a nice little, uh, quite a nice little sighting. So there's a few, few other, other mammals that we that we can get around here from time to time. Um, we've got a small uh, little black swamp wallaby who pretty much lives on our block. I think I saw it this morning. Um, plenty of. Uh, Grey eastern grey kangaroos, as we as I mentioned earlier. Um, some of these trees along the road definitely have got uh, brush-tailed possums in, which I saw when I was uh, out spotlighting uh, a week or so ago. Um, and again, I've not seen for a while, but um, also quite not uncommon to see a uh, echidna here, a short-beaked echidna, which is um, kind of like. Uh, it's like a platypus is a monotreme, so it's one of the very few uh, egg-laying mammals. There's plenty of evidence around of, of them. But I haven't, maybe maybe we can find some on the way back, but you, you'll find where they've been digging in the ground. There's not there's not really any um, wombats around here, and so they're, they're probably them and wombats would be the only things that really would be capable of doing much digging in this in the hard clay soil that we've got here. Um, okay, what have we got over there? Just going to put the camera down a moment. Okay, that's another Jackie Winter. So yeah, this is this is a good area for finding Jackie Winters in. Normally they're on the fence line, but sometimes they're off in the small trees on my left. Um, also got a Willy Wagtail. Ray Fantel and some tree creepers. Okay, so the two birds that you may have just seen chasing up there were brown tree creepers. Um, the the uh, Jackie Winter has now fulfilled its mission and uh, popped onto the fence for me just to prove me prove me honest. I don't know if you can see that it's right in the centre of the uh, right in the centre of the picture there on the on the fence. Uh, I've got a bit of footage of that, so we'll keep going. See if we can get a slightly better view of the uh, three creepers. Uh, okay, just a white plumed honey eater just flew by. Um, yeah, three creepers are still scampering around a bit. Uh, along with the Jackie Winter and a Willy Wagtail. Um, Okay, something smaller up in the tree up here somewhere. Calling. Okay, that one's a spotted pardalote. Um, another really quite attractive bird. Not one that I've presently got footage of, but I will. Um, maybe I'll bring the camera out another time and see if we can get some because it's it's really quite a cute bird. So they were actually uh, while we while we were building the house, uh, the straw bale house, they were actually nesting in the uh, in the straw as we were as we were building. Okay, very quite close to the Jackie Winton. Let's just double checking in case it was a flame robin because of this. Um, there at this time of year, that's another bird that we'll often find on the uh, um, on the wires here. Okay, nice little woody white tail there in front of us. Okay, oh, beautiful. Showing off some of his uh, white wagging behaviour. I was saying earlier, this one's uh, quite an unusual bird in that it will wag its tail from side to side rather than up and down. Um, and it's actually a fantail, not a wagtail. So quite often uh, 
we'll find around the top of these uh, mountains over here. So the, the mountain that you see behind the tree is called Mount Glasgow. Um, it's an extinct volcano. Um, it's quite a good spike up there, quite a lot at the moment, just to use my, uh, I get better coverage on my phone for my work meetings, so I'll go up there sometimes. Um, often, you'll, even from here, you can see um, there's a pair of wedge-tailed eagles um, that we see quite often. They're quite often over, the, over our block as well. Um, but they, they seem to be mostly mostly up there. Um, I'll cut in the footage of those. I've got, got some quite nice footage the other day when I was when I was up there. So I'll cut that one in for you to, to have a look at. It's a really really large um, large eagle. Not particularly uncommon. Um, and again, quite found quite widely, um, widely across most of Australia. Um, they've really, they've really changed their habits. With quite a lot of um, roadkill of kangaroos and uh, other mammals, they've really, really started becoming a lot more, uh, a lot more scavengers than than hunters. Okay, so we're back to our front gate now. Um, uh, we're going to take a walk in now. We'll uh, see what we can find down the driveway. So this this time you often um, we'll find quite a lot of flame robins will be hopping around on the grass uh, to our left here um, in this in this little area. Nothing there at the moment. It's probably not really the best time of day. Um, but yeah, quite a quite a striking bird. Particularly the male has got a very um, Sort of orange, orange red breast that's extremely bright colour, really, really attractive bird. Not very, uh, not too many birds around here at the moment. There's quite a lot of birds around this morning. Um, so I've got mistletoe bird um, in this area this morning, which was the first time I've seen that one since uh, since being in isolation. Quite surprising, it's not particularly uncommon. I kind of would have expected to have seen that one by now. Um, just quite a nice addition. And takes the list as it stands at the moment of recording this are to 89 species, which is pretty good. Certainly helps by the uh, the ver variety of habitat that we've got. Um, you know, with the grassland species and the, and the forest species. Um, I think there's some chance we can get to 100. I can think of a, a, certainly a few other species that are, that are definitely possible here that we that we could add. Um, some we'd need to be in isolation quite a long time for. Um, we've got two. We, we didn't see them on this walk, but still got dusky wood swallows around, um, which I see most day most most times I, I go out. Um, there's a couple of other species that were here during the summer, but they they left quite a while ago now, probably um, more than more than two months ago. Um, would have been the uh, white-browed wood swallow uh, and a few masked wood swallows. So we're uh, almost at the end of our walk now, so I can just see the house uh, through the trees there. Okay, so we're just getting back <clears throat> to the house now. A little bit over 20 degrees, 70 odd degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so there we are, coming back to the end of our walk. And that, as they say, is that. 
hope you enjoyed this uh, little adventure but i might uh, if these are good i might try and put some more of these together if there if enough people are watching it um i'm gonna get different birds each time we go out also um like i said the uh, trailer was so well received i think i might have to uh I have to put something together a half hour sort of comedy show in that sort of vein as well um all right thanks for listening thanks for watching uh hope you don't feel too seasick by my camera work with the phone on the uh, as we've been walking around um stay safe everyone and uh bird the feck at home <laughs>